Hi, this is Carrie Brownstein. This is DJ Premier. This is Darren Aronofsky. You got the Rizzo right here. Rose McGowan. Right here. Hey. Aisha Tyler. A tribe Call Quest. Fred Armisen. Fritz Paul. Javier Munoz, Seth Meyers. Tracy Cosmos. Flying Lotus. Hi, we're Haim, and you're listening to the Talk House Podcast. Ow! What's up? I'm Elia Einhorn. Welcome back to the Talk House Podcast. Today I'm joined by Annie Fell, Associate Editor. And we have a very rad conversation for you. Mac DeMarco speaking with Neil and Liam Finn. This is a father son combo. Now, Liam and Neil just dropped their collaboration LP, Light Sleeper. So they sat down with Mac for, quote, a good old chin wag. Listeners, I first heard of Liam Finn when I was gifted a CD, if you can remember those, parenthetically, I hear they're making a comeback, back in 07. That was his first solo outing, I'll Be Lightning, and it was a great sounding record. He's released a couple more since, and I've been following his career. Admittedly, I had no idea back then that Liam's dad was none other than New Zealand's multi, 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 multi platinum selling singer-songwriter, Neil Finn. I think he and maybe Lord are the country's most famous exports. As co-frontman of Split Ends and then leader of the chart-topping Crowded House, you remember the song, Don't Dream It's Over? He's sold millions of records. And just recently, Neil was even welcomed as the newest member of Fleetwood Mac. Can you imagine what was going through his mind when he got that call? No, not at all. It's such (laughs) an iconic gig. Amazing. Now, Neil's collaborated with family from the very beginning. He worked with his brother, Tim Finn, in Split Ends. And in Crowded House, he brought in Tim as well as Liam and other family members. Right. So it's only fitting that he and Liam decided to make a record together. And on Light Sleeper, which was recorded partly in L.A., but mostly in Neil's Auckland studio, a bunch of family features. So there's Sharon Finn, who's Neil's wife and Liam's mom. She plays bass on a couple songs. Elroy Finn, who's Liam's brother, who drums on most of the record. But it's not just a family affair. The songwriter and producer Conan Moccasin, also from New Zealand, guests on the record, as does Mick Fleetwood himself. Let's check out the song, Back to Life. The video for that song features not only Mac DeMarco, but Natalie Merring from Wiseblood, Kieran J. Callanan, and again, Conan Moccasin. That's actually fitting since it was Conan who introduced Liam and Mac, who became fast friends. Right. In, in true Brooklyn fashion, the two met at a Mexican summer records barbecue. I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. That's very Mac DeMarco. <laughs> So Mac first gained recognition through the handful of releases on the venerable Captured Tracks label. It's actually kind of hard to describe his music on the surface level because his personality plays such a big part in its sound. You could say that it's folk rock with psych elements, but what makes Mac distinct from the thousands of other artists doing that is that his music strikes a very delicate balance between the weirdness and the kind of hard-on-sleeveness of it all. He's sort of similar to Beck in that his music is usually called something along the lines of slacker rock, despite the fact that he's very much not actually a slacker. (laughs) He's a very prolific guy. Yeah, he's a very busy dude. His last LP was 2017's This Old Dog. Let's check out a track from that album, On the Level. See me out of eyes Stand up like a man Mac recently relocated to Los Angeles, and it was in his new garage studio out there that this talk was recorded. I I think Mac's going full Mark Marin on us. I'm stoked for his inevitable podcast. (laughs) Yes. The Finns dropped by, and they chopped it up about a lot. We hear about the interweaving of generations of Finns as Light Sleeper was written and recorded. The pluses and minuses of falling in love with one's demos. They get into the artistic freedoms and constraints that Mac experiences. We hear about Neil's shopping trip with Mick Fleetwood. And the tale of the grunge star that he saved from circling sharks. 
They also talk about listening to your own music in the supermarket. Evidently, it's not easy. And we also learn why hiring a dominatrix can actually help the recording process. Who knew? (laughs) Should we roll it? Let's do it. Thank you so much for tuning in. (laughs) You did it really well. I kind of want to do it weird. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for tuning in. (laughs) You're listening to Talk House on the web. I'm Mac DeMarco. We're in my garage today. We're joined by... Neil Finn, yes. here on Purple Microphone. Mm-hmm. And, and Liam Finn, I'm spitting on the orange. Yeah. Let's chop it up. We'll, we'll keep it classy. Because you guys have a record coming up next. Yeah. This, this week. This week. It's Friday, Friday, is it? Oh, this yeah. week. We're, we're finally in re- release week after two years or even longer. Yeah, it was a slow gestation, slow delivery, living in different cities, mixing in a different place. But it's finally arrived, and one we got a record we delivered to you this afternoon. That feels nice to That's be able to do that. that. Yeah, thank you for the yeah. uh, <laughs> the vinyl. Pop that puppy on later on. <laughs> Hell yeah! It's called Light Sleeper. Light Sleeper. Yeah. And you, you say you you recorded it over the last two years all over, but in the crib in New Zealand, probably in the a crib lot, in yeah. New Zealand. Yeah, um, in my music room there. Oh yeah. Um, which I th- you've been to, actually, Which on a trip. I think I've told you is kind of a uh, blueprint for the room we're sitting in right now. Well, I'm... Well, know, a couple pieces. I've recognized a couple of familiar pieces. The little Roland drum machine over there. CR-78. Is a, I got, like, the cheap version. Of, what do you guys have there? The Neve Melbourne or something? Or I think you got rid of it now, but, the, like, it was oh, the a little... side cart. Little yeah, we, we sold that because it was... And we bought an API for yeah. downstairs. Yeah, we're yeah. already on gear. Yeah. <laughs> it's already just got gone nerdy. But see, but I got the, I got the cheap the cheap O'Neill. Still incredibly expensive, but not quite as quite beautiful. I think it sounds yeah, great. It's, though, it's right? concise. That's Small. the thing about Neves is that they sound great, but they're also like super cute. So mm. they're kind of it makes it like twice as irresistible. It's ambience. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah. right. You got a great setup in here. I love it. It's okay. Sounds alright yeah. in here. You know, it's yep. fine. You know, totally cool. Totally cool. Well, it's obviously working well. Well, we'll see. I haven't really released anything that I've done in here yet, so maybe really? everyone's going to... I well, thought the last record was... Last one was in the front room of the house, ah, right. which was totally fine. That's kind of... I mean, this for me is like, you know, huge. Yeah. It's like a huge room. It's comfortable. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. Yeah. I think I like it better when it's like so jammed in that... Uh, well, I saw your room years ago in, in New, New York. York. That was... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was... That it was, couldn't be more jammed in. Yeah. But I like that, though. Yeah. You know? Full, fully. And then a bed on the top. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. But the room in Auckland is great. And, yeah, it's And you would relate to this, but there's nothing more beautiful to me than a room that's ready to go the minute you walk into it. Oh, yeah. Rather than having to plug shit in. No, and, I hate that. You know... Mm. So once you do get it into that sweet spot where it's all working, and as it was when we were doing our sort of jamming to get this whole thing going, you can really get a lot done. And yeah. you listen back to it, even if it sounds a bit vague at the time, listen back to it a few days later and you think, yeah, actually there's something there. Yeah, it's tight. It's, yeah. Hit that record. room has the some humming. quality about it as well that we've both made a lot of music in there over the years. So mm. doing it together, was it felt effortless to get comfy and we very quickly started making pretty pretty sultry lounge kind of mm-hmm, like we didn't know mm-hmm. what we were going to make at all but it came out very relaxed mm-hmm. sounding very cinematic and that that got us quite excited so we just is this the first time you guys track. were like let's make a record like a full-blown record together yeah well, yeah obviously i We'd, mean you played both been playing on each other's stuff for a long time though yeah how long have you guys known each other by the way <laughs> <laughs> well coming up 35 <laughs> 30, yeah 35 nice. years nice i mean i was singing into sharon's belly so maybe it's 36 really <laughs> Yeah. So you've known me anyway. You've heard my voice. Yeah. It was kind of weird, veiled relationship. You didn't yeah. know what I looked like. Well, I used to sing the same song. Then somebody had told me there was a good theory when you have a kid that if you sing the same song into your partner's belly mm. while they're growing in there, that that song becomes quite uh, useful for getting them to sleep when they're born. And it worked what, perfectly for us. What was the song? It was a split end song called Devil You Know, which is actually quite a strange. <laughs> the Devil You Know. Yeah. Stab, stab, stabby. Yeah. 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 There's something, yeah, something slightly odd about it now. It I think still about it, puts, it still makes me sleepy, that song. It? Yeah, it's a beautiful song. It's kind of boring song. <laughs> Nothing it's wrong not. with boring music, right? If it puts you to sleep, hey, that's a blessing. It's better than a pill. Yeah, there you go. Has yeah. Buddy got one? Guess. 
Uh, well, I was, we were trying to make it um, the Bengals' eternal flame. I sang that into the belly. Oh, yeah. oh, right. Then when he came out, he was like, to stop with that song. <laughs> oh, God, already. <laughs> um, he likes Somewhere Over the Rainbow and Moon River. Moon oh, River yeah. was the first one. Moon right. River's a good he's one. He's kind of an old-fashioned guy. He, he Those just are likes... two classically sleepy songs, yeah. I feel. Yeah. He's, he likes Nothing mostly old, like, um, Henry Mancini film soundtrack Exotica. stuff when he came out. He's a cl- yeah. classy little dude. Nice. Yeah. And Queen, though. Oh, he loves Queen, yeah. Yeah. We will rock you. Was that was for Buddy last one. night? It was, yeah. It was exactly for Buddy. Yeah. Nice, you know, he's nice. Only dimly aware. For the people tuning in, I went to the uh, these two's uh, uh, rock concert yesterday at the uh, Largo and at the Coronet. Is that what you Largo yeah. at the Coronet. Yeah, an old theater on La Cienega. Yeah, good spot. It's Very a great spot. spot. We had a memorable night there a few weeks ago with yourself. That's true. What well, that was uh, full last night was just the two of you guys. Yeah. On pianos, electric guitars, acoustic guitars. Weeks ago, that was what, like a month ago or something. Yeah, maybe. I guess maybe even more. I don't know. It's all a blur. That was the full rock band who, with who, togas. Yeah, who do we have in the clientele then? It was Conan was there. Conan Mox, John, John Kirby, Carol Kirby, Carol Kirby, um, yeah. Mike Myers, Mike Myers, Wendy, Briefly. Wendy Malvoin, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Natalie, Sebastian, Natalie, Natalie Steinberg, Weisblood, yeah. Uh, there was so many people, I think, that last night's show was a response to that, where we were like, we're just going to do it. Yeah, yeah. Keep the, it quiet just this the two time. Of us. Yeah. Two of us. And it was really nice, because you don't need to... And the same when we were jamming and writing this. When there's only two of you in the room, you can kind of tune into every thread that's going um, without distraction. That's yeah. what we were enjoying. I was really enjoying that last night, mm. feeling like free. You can actually go somewhere and... It works. And, well, you know, Only one the, person has to The other guy's going to come with you yeah, in yeah. some <laughs> form, you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I can't, nice. I mean, because I, I don't ever, when I'm doing records, it's like the le, the less people there are, I mean, I'm usually doing it completely alone, but I yeah. can't imagine doing it, I don't know, maybe it's just that I have no experience with it, but uh, especially, I, is it, I don't know, it's a weird to, I mean, you guys are... Family. Yeah, family. Well, we, we didn't know what we were going to do. We knew it was about time because I think we got to a point where it felt we would be coming to it as equals. Lem's built up a really big body of work, which I yeah. know really well and I love and... He knows my stuff, having grown up with it. And we done enough things on stage that we just thought there was a sense of rightness about it and a bit of trust because it's kind of, you, you can get a bit fraught with anybody else in a room. And when it's family, you can't afford to get too upset about anything because you know you're going to have to sit down at the table, you know, and have dinner. So we were yeah, very true, tolerant yeah, of each true. other. and But we're yeah. both kind of control freaks in our own world. But we had to kind of look give away a little bit of authority on each song, you know, which is a healthy thing to do. It might be but good that, for you. it was like the songwriting even was collab- It wasn't like, okay, I brought one, I brought one. There's a little bit of that, but okay. mostly all created together, yeah. That's wild. Yeah. Most of it was kind of that came from just jams yeah. that, that had an atmosphere that we liked and then someone would maybe take charge on one and go, I'm going to write some words on this, mm. and, you know, and you'd wake up the next day and one of us would have been up working on something and you play it to the other one and you get either you get more ideas or you'd be like that's done don't mess with it yeah. you know so it was no quite touch. good it was sort of like we've we discovered good producers out of each other you know right, someone right, that's right. quite you can trust on telling you when to stop yeah. working on things because yeah, i think yeah. that's the hardest thing for both of us is probably have a tendency to over work mm. songs until you know until they you yeah. can yeah. Yeah. actually literally <laughs> had to tell me to stop working on on one that i was yeah. <laughs> working and work, trying new ideas for vocals. I was looking for a verse for about six months and I tried about seven different things. Yeah, and yeah. Every time I sent them to me, go, yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's got real promise. And, yeah. and in the end he just said, I, I can't it. listen to this anymore. <laughs> 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 it's terrible. I felt really deflated because he was in LA and I was in Auckland. I had, could, I had to face it on my own. It was good. We didn't have to, you know. Yeah. But we, you know, but we had, we had to be honest with each other. Yeah. Yeah. It's been really good. I think we enjoyed playing music, we sense that by writing songs together we might be able to take live performance to a new level, and I think we have already. We've only done a few things, but yeah, just seems like there's more um, instinctive understanding on stage and, you know, trust, so it's good, good development. Intercept. But you, so other than the music room, where else? I mean, you probably did some in your garage here in L.A., am I yeah. assuming? Yeah, so we, we did a... We did a few weeks of writing, then we had this old friend, Chad Blake, who's a great engineer and producer, come down to New Zealand to sort of do the official session. But what we'd already done 
we'd grown attached to. So a lot of that was either we trying to work out how to keep the essence of you it. You fell in love with the demos. Exactly, yeah. Mistake number but Chaz one. But good at no, that. No, it's actually kind Realization of yeah, number it's really one. Good yeah. when it's good. But he was good, wasn't he? Because he, he actually liked them as well. He so. wasn't afraid to, you know, yeah. we, we tried recutting some of them because we had Mick Fleetwood as well kind yeah. of quite randomly yeah. come down and play. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, here, listen to these abstract demos. And we, so we recut some of them in traditional form. And some of them we used, some of them we kind of um, threw away and went back to the demo and added to that. But yeah. it was all a good discovery. But it's so, great when it yeah. can work out like that. Yeah. yeah. I always try and make my demos so bad sounding that I have to redo them. But even yeah. in that circumstance, sometimes I'll do the proper, you know, in my proper, yeah. in my terms, it still sounds like crap. But, uh, do the like real recording of it and be like, man, I just like the demo more. And yeah. then I'm screwed, you know. Well, but that's why I put out demo albums with every record. The, the moment of creation is is a quite it's a the powerful sweetest thing. Part, yeah. yeah, it is. You're jacked about it. You're like, oh my god, yeah. well, how did I do this? And you yeah. want to listen to it yourself, which yeah. is a good sign, I think. Yeah, you know? well, I think you're trying to sell the idea to yourself a bit too. So the way you lean into performing that first really good take is kind of convince you know but making yourself believe and yeah, that's there's something yeah. in the sound of that that's really appealing i think yeah the flavor yeah i don't know so after the few weeks of the proper proper session and mm. the and dad's mate like Downstairs, wonderful yeah. beautiful studio we oh, yeah. took took it away i went back to la and that was all around the time that buddy was born basically so i kind of tuned out a little bit for the next couple of months and dad chipped away on a few things and then came over to join us around the birth and that's when we kind of actually finished a lot of it in uh, my little room okay. cool kind of just vocals and and we discovered a few of the pieces of music that we just sort of made from comp improvising together that we actually really loved and we turned yeah. those into things and so some of the discoveries were actually quite late in the piece but really yeah, um, it's an unusual important. process yeah because we were separated for a lot of it together for some of it but and then when we were mixing was the craziest because Chad was in Wales, mixing in Wales. Liam was list getting copies, you know, things sent in LA and I was getting things sent in Auckland. A whole day would go by just to get one vocal lifted up by a tiny bit, you know, <laughs> like good. just because we'd have to email it. He, you know, he's living so far out in the back blocks in Wales that he can't even download. Uh, he's even like, got good enough internet to... He had to drive down the road in his car <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to a, a cell phone tower about 20 minutes away from his house to get... You know, yeah. if we wanted to change a vocal, and that's, it was really strange. Yeah. On one hand, we, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's a like, worldwide record, right? There. Yeah. yeah, well, it is. But it's made me more relaxed, I think, as a person, like less um, impatient. Somehow, I'm not sure whether it's just uh, co coincidence that I've just maybe I've mellowed a bit, but yeah. I think I would have been like, we need to get this done out and stuff. But at this point now, I'm kind of like, I've been kind of happy sitting on it for a while yeah. and yeah. letting it take its time. You know. It's interesting when you do that. I mean, because I, you know, the, the, I mean, I haven't put out that many records, but the ones that I did, you know, that people know me for, or whatever, it's like one month, write them all, record them all, put them on the thing, send yeah, them out, fast, get them mastered. Yeah, and like, you know, and then I, at the time I was like, this is perfect, this works perfectly, and I'll go on tour for the whole year, and then I just do one month yeah. and everything. And then, you, you know, a couple of years passed, and you're like, yo, I don't, why did, nah, nah. And now it's like, you know, there is a special thing about, you write a song, you leave it for four months, you listen to it again. You're like, oh, what? Oh, okay. You know, maybe something changes for you about it or something like that. But yeah, I don't know. It's I great that it, there's no absolutes. You know, yeah. like it's, I've, I've been in awe of how you how fast you've worked and, and made these quite it's concise worse, things. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But, exactly, you know. yeah. But then at the same time, you like I think it, you're probably looking forward to taking some time. Chilling, I'm, yeah, chilling. I'm, I'm kind of excited about. To rip. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm excited. Well, you know, like I just said, I've mellowed out about timing, but I'm actually, I think it'd be quite good to have a deadline. I did a soundtrack where I had a three weeks to make 21 See that? Yeah. pieces, and that was plays, yeah. stressful, but I did it, and I didn't double-guess anything, and it was really fulfilling experience. It made me realize that I actually had this idea, that how can you, like when you've got a deadline working for someone else, you have to deliver because that's what your job is. And, yeah. and I thought when you're doing it for yourself, it's actually really hard to get that, well, I find it hard to kick myself up the ass to really knuckle down yeah, and hustle, deliver. Yeah. They can always push a deadline back. But I, I thought maybe hiring a, like a dominatrix to come in once a week <laughs> and if you haven't delivered four songs, finished, play it to them. If, if they're not happy, you're getting whipped. That you well, So you like that, though? Well, I'd, we'd find that out pretty quickly. Lead to endless but, delays, isn't it? Well, I guess it could go either way, I think. But I think if you didn't like it, i got to find something I don't like. The, you know. Yeah. Maybe like waterboarding or something. Yeah, <laughs> oh, shit. 
<laughs> yeah. That, I mean, that would work. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, yeah, that would be, yeah, that's like a new style of, that would be kind of, well, I don't know if it would be cool, but it would be something. Well, you get a video out of that as well. Yeah. That's I'd love to hear that, that record. Video. Yeah, yeah that would be strange. <laughs> Doesn't really mellow record like that. <laughs> <laughs> but I think repetition is the thing that becomes, you know, everything, what works for you, you can't assume it's going to work, keep working anyway. It's just good to allow yourself the, the idea of being able to look at things from all sides and examine them. Not to let you into getting more things more perfect, but just to seeing little gaps in your armor that you you fall into these traps. You know, like something's always going to f- feel pleasing to you. A little chord change is always going to feel nice to yeah. you. But when you hear them, when you do it a dozen times, you've got to kind of force your yeah. hand and feel some discomfort or something about finding a few new angles. That's what, to some extent, we were doing on this because we weren't satisfied with our own little tricks because we'd bust each other for them, you know, like... Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Liam would say, well, that's a, that's a bit too neat the way you're singing that, you know, try a little bit around the beat and you get a little bit kind of taken aback and initially like, well, it's my thing. Yeah, exactly. But then yeah, when you yeah, bust yeah. away from it, it feels really good, you know, that's yeah, why. Yeah, I think, yeah, with, with having, you know, more up. time too, I think it's also like, for me, because, yeah, a lot of people will probably even say like, oh, those two records, you know, like they just, you know, you did them, they sound exactly the same. It's like... Sure, I mean, it's it's the tricks that they're hearing, you know. <laughs> but if you have enough time, then I feel like you know you have, you give yourself time to like your interests change. Your yeah, exactly, uh, yeah. You know, you get excited about a different aesthetic. Exactly, well, but yeah. then you know, I I I'm in the situation right now where it's like, well, I kind of want to do this with my next record. But if I did like you know, an ambient record, my fans would be like. Fuck you. <laughs> like, what did you do? You might secretly enjoy that, though. I think yeah, I get some kind of yeah, some pleasure out of that. There is perversity in all of us, I think, to yeah. be not what your hardcore fans develop a very, and some of them anyway, I don't mean to criticize them exactly, because, but it is almost an entitlement of they think they know what you should be yeah, doing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they get upset if you don't. It doesn't sound right. It's yeah, like, if you break bad. the mold somehow. But Oh, maybe the... You've got to, you've got to be. Um, am I didn't drifting? <laughs> Can that relax? Drifting. I'm actually starting to have a real conversation. I'm forgetting about the <laughs> microphone. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, I don't know. And are you guys taking the? Are you going to do a tour for this record is coming up or? May, eventually, like kind eventually. Of, yeah. We're, we're in January. We're going to do some there. shows in Europe in between Dad's side oh, okay. project. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little just. I'm a little distracted with my new gig now. So. Is that common knowledge now or no? Yeah. Okay. It is, yeah. I'm re- in rehearsals, in fact. Nice. Um, and yeah, well, there's a left hand turn that didn't see coming. But it's, you know, strangely, there's weird links with this, though, because, and, and you could look at it as seeming right because Liam and Janina met. Well, the first real big moment in your relationship was going to see Fleetwood Mac play, right? Yeah, because I, I knew the music, but I, I wasn't a huge fan mm. 15 or 10 years ago. You better be now. But yeah. <laughs> well, to be honest, I feel like I got Dad maybe back into it because yeah, Janina I, got me into it. I always thought they were great, but I never really bought their records particularly anyway. There you go. Or, there you, go. you know, and when you're in a band, you don't really want to like any other, any other band, you know, yeah. especially not if they're <laughs> mega successful. But yeah, Janina took me with all her girlfriends on, the, on, a, on a girl's road trip and one of her friends couldn't come, so I took the ticket and we had a, I had a very felt like life-changing experience in the sort of light misty rain at the Bowl of Brooklyn's in New Zealand, which is this beautiful outdoor venue. Oh, crazy. Um, a natural sort of amphitheater and, and I was never the same again. And all of a sudden I was, you know, this was the soundtrack to our courtship. Yeah, so, so it was quite strange to then all of a sudden we're making this record together, and, <laughs> and Dad's like, Mick Fleetwood's going to come and come down and play on this record. That was pre the invitation, though. We had no idea that would lead to anything. But no, no, that's what I mean. It's all we just clicked on. He's a really yeah. charming. How long have you guy. known Mick for? A long time? Or? Well, not really. I mean, we we met years and years ago at a benefit concert in London, and just okay. struck up a conversation. And he remembered. And that night, you remember that we got on really well, but it was only brief. And then we saw him years later at a New Zealand Music Awards, strangely enough, because it would be weird that he's at a New Zealand Music Awards. He's American, though, isn't he? Yeah. No, no, he's English. English. No, no, he's English, yeah. And the band's been going since 1967 or something. Yeah. It's incredible history they've got. Twelve different lineups, almost, you know. In the Peter Green era of the band, how they started is known as a blues band, really, and, and, Mm. and it's developed into this pop thing. But anyway, long story short, I went out to dinner with him at the time I saw him recently, and that was a few years ago, and we just had a really enjoyable evening and kept in touch. 
And when we decided we'd make the record, there's something about creating a sense of occasion and, and you're nothing necessarily is going to work for guarantee, but if we had Chad coming down, which we'd already arranged, um, mm. and he's, you know, an old friend and a special engineer, and we were going to do it in the prop studio, and we thought, well, how, how should I ask Mick? Mick had said he'd love to play on something at some point because he's, he's just a really avid musician. He just likes to play. He wants to mm. be active. and He's got know. a good pocket, that guy. He's yeah. a good guy to have in your, yeah. in your little address book. That's what's up. But here I rang him up just randomly, he said, would you want to come down for 10 days and play some music? And he said, sure. And yeah, there he was. That's what's up. Telling stories. Yeah, very, very high caliber of story. Yeah, yeah. I can yeah. imagine probably like the craziest shit you've ever heard in your yeah. life. <laughs> and he's very photogenic. Like it's really something sickening about a guy who's now about 10 years older than me. And you get all the photos from a session, and he looks like a million bucks every photo. And I'm looking all ragged <laughs> and hot. <laughs> Come on. No, well, he's got a he's he's a stylish dresser, you know. Like he puts a lot of effort into it, and he, he really uh, he took me shopping a little while ago in Damn. LA. You know, I've never spent so much money as I did in one go, but he was fantastic <laughs> to go shopping. Going, with. He said, yes, I think you should try the size under that. It's just a little bit uh, broad. Yeah, that's better. It's got the good line. You know, he's really great. Oh, wow. he's great. Damn. It's not really my thing. I don't normally go no, shopping I've, at all. I've never seen you come home from shopping in a good mood. I was you fine. <laughs> I'm the same way, yeah. Yeah, I, I hate gotta shopping. find somebody like Mick. That sounds pretty good, actually. Well, I'm sure he should be... do. The, he should do shopping that you. That'd be a good go TV show. Shopping, shopping expeditions with Mick. With Mick. Yeah. Yeah. It would be a Mac great. And Mick. Oh my god, <laughs> that's a great idea. I want to put that to him. He'd probably be up for it. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> you like shopping? No, 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 I don't, no. no I, don't. I don't know who does like it. But I can't I, stand it. Mick, Fleetwood loves it. Yeah. yeah I got to I guess, yeah. Yeah. Even groceries. I can, any any variety of... See, I don't mind that. I'm kind of into going to the supermarket. I hate the supermarket. Really? Yeah. I hate it. I don't know if you've had the experience of going to the supermarket and hearing your own music at the supermarket. But it happens Some, to me... Yeah. I, well, yeah, I can... Yeah. It happens to me quite a lot. If I go to the, like, the maybe, like, like, the hip groceries, like, you know, like, the hipster... Maybe Lassen's or something. Three six five or something. Or like the the uh, Trader Joe's. Three six five play. Three six five would be it. Yeah. Have yeah. the uh, I don't know where, where they're getting it from, but it's definitely a pretty cool well, playlist. Well, it would be in, in Silver Lake. It's bound to be. In yeah. The, and you get the the cashier that's kind of like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> so they yeah, look okay. like they've been given happy pills. Yeah. At that place. <laughs> yeah. There's some part of the training, I think. Um, but I was going to say, like the, the weird thing about listening to your own music in a supermarket is. Usually, I don't recognize it to start off with. Yeah. But I have a vague sensation that there's some really annoying music playing. <laughs> <laughs> I've said it to Sharon a couple of times. Oh, no, what's this song? I hate this song. And she goes, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always a true story. Just because the band, like when we play live, we sound so drastically different than the, my records. Yeah. So I forget what the records sound like, and I'll hear it sometimes and be like, what the? It's <laughs> yeah. like kind of jarring to be like, oh. We've been playing this like 30 BPM faster than I wrote it for like five years. Like, all right, cool. But, you know. Every now and again, it sounds better. Yeah. You, you realize it's got better because you've yeah, been on the road. True, but, true. But sometimes you do miss details Yeah. Um, yeah. that you forget about. But people are, some people love, like if the drummer does the same, you're teaching a new drummer a Crowded House song, in my case or something, mm. and you'll skip over the details and go, ah, oh, it doesn't matter, just do a fill there, it's going to be... And, but when somebody takes the trouble of learning the fill from the record, yeah. there's something quite thrilling about that, and people, you almost see people out in the audience going, my God, Yay. Hey, he did it! <laughs> you know, my favourite fill. In the, yeah. well, you know. Me and Elroy have tried our best. Elroy's really good at that, at he learns trying him, to make yeah. sure mm. that, that we're delivering some authenticity true to the original, you know. Because I think we've seen so many incarnations of these songs of yeah, people totally. playing that, you know... Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny harder. when you're teaching it's people your own it. songs for the 10th time. It's really grueling. And also especially because when back in the day, Mitchell Froome, who I worked with as a producer, encouraged me to start thinking about chopping songs up with bars missing and a few beats missing here to keep the song moving forward so it's ah. not totally symmetrical, you know. Right. Uh, and it was cool and it made sense. Like, for instance, in the song Don't Dream It's Over, there's, there's a little half a bar before the middle eight and there's a half a bar before the ending and... And it sounds great, and it's totally natural to me, but whenever you're teaching people the first time, it throws right. them off right, 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 right. base. And, uh, anyway, 
That's crazy. Mm. Something, something to be said for symmetry in terms of being able to teach people. Right. But I like yeah. my half well, bars. A, you just need a musical director now that teaches your new bands the stuff before you even come in. Mm. Do you and divide do you, things up into even amounts in terms of verses and choruses and shit like that? Do you, um, do you think about yeah, that much? I always have like some recipe. It used to be like, yeah, it would be like verse, chorus, verse, chorus. And then like uh, there was a point in time where I was like, man guitar solo like <laughs> yeah. when i was a teenager i was like i would never put a guitar solo in my music. and then all of a sudden i was like i'm gonna put a guitar solo on every single song and they're all gonna yeah. be like pretty funny so okay. it was that and now it, i don't know the, the more i go it's it's always like very even with my lyrics it's like i'll usually try and have the same structure and almost yeah. the same you know like lead in with the lines and stuff but uh the more i go the, i just want to strip it back it's like, oh, you know, the, the chords are going to be the same the whole song, and if somebody's got a problem with that, like, go fuck yourself. No, well, I think know? that was what was the nice thing about your last record is that you were, you were obviously in a reduce mode. I think that's really good. Yeah, just keep Because the tendency is to over, is to become more complex, so I yeah. think it's good to fight against that. I can't, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, sometimes. If Having I said can, that, our record's quite complex, isn't it, really? It is, but there's a few things. Not all. Picking a theme, I used to overcomplicate it. But um, I'm into this thing now where if you can actually make a song work that revolves around almost like the same chords but yeah. that no one realizes because yeah, exactly, yeah. you're just in it. I think that's, that's really the, cool. That's I, the yeah. real trick is, yeah, just nothing nothing musically. Maybe you change yeah. the melody or something, but it's like it's I feel the like same that's, thing. That's the, um, the true craft now is making stuff sound so effortless like it was always supposed to be like that. But yeah, exactly. Hiding the complexity or hiding the amount of work. And then yeah. we've talked about this a bit on this yeah. one. The amount of effort and work that's gone into some of these songs is is incredibly convoluted and and excruciating at times. But then when you the final result is like, oh, yeah. it was all worth it yeah, because exactly. now it sounds, it like sounds effortless. We just did yeah. it, yeah. yeah. And so I, th I, I when I listen to the record, I can actually relax yeah. and listen to it now, which is really cool. Yeah, it's dope. Yeah, yeah. The classic one for that two chord thing is that this is the Fleetwood Mac song "Dreams," isn't it? Two chords. Oh yeah, the whole, whole yeah. way. And just, it's got a little bridge. couple little, little oh it's got a little bridge that yeah, was because he made a mistake guitar. John McVie played an, an A oh, right. uh, made it into a minor all of a sudden um, oh that's a great bit yeah and that was you know good accident yeah what do they say uh, keep it simple stupid yeah <laughs> kiss yeah there you go <laughs> What a, what, it's, that's great. <laughs> Kiss kept it real <laughs> simple, the band, too. I'll yeah, they yeah. generally did, yeah, uh, except for uh, the makeup. God, that would have taken hours. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, speaking of rock legends, maybe we should talk a little bit about Eddie. Always. I heard a uh, story about you, Neil. Y yeah. Um, at the Peahaw house that we were talking about earlier. Yeah. That you were out on the, the the house is looking towards the the beach there black yes. magnetic sand one of the most beautiful places i've seen in my life uh, so far beautiful place uh but you you were you were up on the um the balcony there looking out at the water and you noticed someone drowning in the in the sea there yeah and i can't remember who told me this but the way that i was told it is that you went down to the beach swam out carried them back to shore yeah brought them on resuscitated them and uh, turned out to be Eddie Vedder of Pearl Jam. It's pretty much, that's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> um, there was a shark, though, as well. Oh. Uh, circling, <laughs> circling when I spotted him. 15 meter. Took care of that thing, huh? Pretty, I had to go and deal to it, yeah. yeah punched, straight in the well, eyes. Fear, that's the thing about yeah, sharks. They fear dead. Sharks know this guy. Yeah. And uh, he's got the prong trick. Uh, here he comes. They just actually, they scarped the minute I got in the water, really. My, they yeah. smelt me. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and I, you know, dragged him in. I gave him a lecture about not going swimming on his own in the rip. Yeah, and yeah. Eddie was, you know, he was grateful. Showed him a couple of things on his on the surfboard. Right, right. Yeah, I don't think he surfed before. He wasn't surfer before that. Yeah. And uh, sent him on his way. Yeah. Then we ended up going to the show. It's great. And then he was a big Thrill Jam fan, so right, he right. was real happy yeah. about that. And came and stayed in Liam's room the night. I didn't stay in there that night. <laughs> But I wanted to, but mum and dad wouldn't let me. Right. See, that part is true. Okay. He did actually sleep in Liam's room. Nice. He was... I woke what up in the morning with some veg <laughs> true. Veggie well, toast. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to spoil the mythology. That's a great mythology. It's amazing. Chinese whispers. Yeah. Chinese there was a whispers. rescue involved. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. And he did get into... He got in trouble in the undertow, and he got rescued by the surf lifesavers. It's, it's ripping out there. Right? It's ripping, yeah. 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 I think we swam a little bit, but I don't know if we went in that... 
Well, he's a confident swimmer, so he went out a little too far. He wasn't in any trouble. He put his hand up. They came and got him in the little rife, you know, rubber dinghy. Oh, wow. Pulled him out. And then they complained publicly to the media that he hadn't given them a donation for getting saved. Like, what? That's really bad, isn't it? Yeah. I, yeah. I think that the, have money I think at the, the beach. lifesavers themselves were deeply embarrassed by that. I think some yeah. idiot honcho made a, made a statement yeah. Yeah, about it. Well, I think it might have even been... Oh, I don't know if this is an interesting story or not, but I remember that, uh, that what was printed was not a sausage nor dollar was given for the... For that, was the that was the terminology. Not a sausage, not a sausage nor dollar was given <laughs> for the rescue. So the next time um, Pearl Jam were in town, Eddie got up on stage and kind of said... Because he did actually donate to them like a week later. He just didn't do it that day, of course. You don't have cash on, on the beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. them or something. Yeah. Anyway, he, he pulled out a sausage and a dollar on, on stage and threw it out. To the audience, to yeah, <laughs> which I thought was pretty cool. He, a long dollar, a he, threw oh, a he bought a sausage yeah, yeah. onto stage and, and donated it to the lot. Really and threw it into the audience <laughs> yeah. and it hit a young lady in the face, <laughs> which she loved it, though. Yeah, but obviously. yeah it's Eddie's sausage. Yeah, that's maybe not the right way to put it. <laughs> that's cool. Damn. But, yeah, so somewhere in the middle of that account is the truth. Yeah, uh, Most uh, of it's, all of it's. Some yeah. of it was, you know, fanciful. Yeah, but what the hell? Which part was it? We'll never know. No. There are sharks out there. So Really? Yeah, but not... I mean, he survived. That's the main thing. There was a specter that that would be... It was. It haunted me a little bit that somehow, through our actions, um, he might have... You know, Pearl Jam might have lost their lead singer at the height of their, mm. their fame and forever would become a shrine, the beach. So I'm glad we got him out of there. Yeah. <laughs> I know, because it's a that's a very different story as Neil Finn killed Eddie Vedder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That'd be a good one too, yeah. Yeah. So uh Light Sleeper comes out Friday, which is what, the twenty fourth? Yeah. Twenty fourth of August. That's it. Twenty fourth is one of my favorite numbers, so that's that's gotta be a good sign. Yeah. Um if if everyone listening doesn't go out and buy it, I'm gonna hunt you down. And I'm going to end you. (laughs) So, yeah, check it out. Beautiful record. uh, Beautiful people. Beautiful family. God bless you. Thank you, Mac. My pleasure. It's been a delight to be in your your space and uh, having a good good old chinwag with you. Mm -hmm. Thank Mm -hmm. you. No worries. Peace. Peace and love. Ciao. Mac, Neil, and Liam, thank you so much for joining us on the show this week. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to subscribe. Upcoming shows feature guests like Elizabeth McGovern. We're going to hear about that Downton Abbey movie, I hope. Death Cab for Cuties, Ben Gibbard, Tierra Wack, Dilly Dally, and so many, many more. You're not going to want to miss it. For behind the scenes photos and news about upcoming events, you can check us out on the socials at TalkHouse. Today's talk was recorded by Ali Miku. About whom the guys had to say. <laughs> man, I like your style, man. I gotta say, you're about the least stressed out guy I've ever met in this job. This episode was produced by Mark Yoshizumi. And our theme song is composed and performed by The Range. Till next week, I'm Ellie Einhorn. I'm Annie Fowl. Peace. Bye.